Good morning, everybody. It is Ashley Fields with Yarded or Us, and we are going to be doing our Monarch Butterfly Blank today. Uh, we this one, <coughs> this one, uh, this pattern is easy in the sense that you're only doing really blending and outlining. And so um, that makes it a little bit easier for those of you that might struggle with shading because we don't have to worry about shading on this one. I'm just trying to get my uh, my comments pulled up. I thought, what? Oh, I'm on the wrong page, y'all. <laughs> uh, every time I get on here, I'm trying to, I try to pull it up on my iPad so I can see comments and, and share and all that. Hi, Steph, how are you? And I'm um, sitting here doing it from the wrong page. So, all right, so glad that you're here. Thank you for being here today. All right, y'all, good morning, Debbie. Debbie, can I get you to share this in um, Painters Club and Academy? For whatever reason, it won't let me do it over here. Uh, but we're gonna work on our, our Monarch today. This one's really fun. I find it to be a little bit easier for those of you that might struggle with um, shading because we don't really have shading on this one. So here is what our end result is going to look like. I'm gonna set this one aside. And I am, uh, on this one that I have down here, I simply started with one coat of white. So that one coat, like it, you can kind of see through it. I didn't, I did not do two coats, I only did one. And really when I'm painting this, if I wasn't doing this on a live, I would not have done the black. The only reason I put the black on here is so that when I do get done doing the blending, that we can move into the next part rather quickly. But if you guys at home are gonna paint this pattern, I suggest you just start with one coat of white. Do not try to do the black like I did. Again, the only reason I have black on here is for the live purposes of trying to be a little bit faster um, once I'm on here and painting. Uh, but those of you at home, start with one coat of white and go straight into your blending after that. So I am going to grab a plate and grab a fresh plate. And I'm gonna get my colors for the blending. Now, on that, I did use asterisk orange. I used shading orange. And I used light orange. I, I personally, when I, especially when I'm blending, hey mom, how are you? Uh, I like to use three different tones of the same color family. So uh, these are the colors that I kind of picked. I'm actually gonna start with shading and then move to asterisk and then move to uh, light orange. But these will be the three that we're using. So I'm gonna shake these up a little bit, make sure they're mixed, and just start putting a little bit on my plate. I am traditionally somebody that puts a little too much, so I'm gonna start with a little bit and I can always add more if I need more. But I'm gonna just get these three down. All right, now I'm also using three different brushes. These are all the same exact brush. These are all Crafter's Choice uh, flat tip brushes. These are camel hair brushes. And I personally like these for blending. Notice the blunt flat tip. This is different than using like a mop brush that's rounded at the end. The rounding makes it harder to do the blending. So I like to use the flat tip. Good morning, Belinda. How are you doing, my dear? Hi, Karen. I'm so glad you guys are here. Uh, so blending, you want a flat tip. It just makes it a little bit simpler to get those colors blended. I also prefer using three different brushes um, so that I don't have to try to wash out in between because this technique for me is a lot easier if my brushes are dry. So three different brushes is just how I like to do it. Yes, you can still do it with just one brush. This is just my personal preference and how I do it. All right, y'all. So I have one coat of white at the, at the base in my background. And again, I only put that black on for the purposes of our live video. If you guys are doing this at home, do not try to do the black before the blending. Do the black after the blending. All right, so I'm gonna grab one brush. Again, three quarter inch, Crafter's Choice, flat tip. Uh, these are camel hair brushes. I'm gonna start with my darkest color. So I have shading orange, asterisk orange, and light orange. I'm gonna start with that shading orange because it is the darkest. I go ahead and I kind of, I really make sure to get it loaded in there. Um, Want to make sure I have enough paint to start with. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Uh, let's see, Belinda says, I may have missed it, but what is the brand of the camel hair brushes? These are Crafter's Choice. I think I have that camera on backwards, but these are Crafter's Choice three quarter inch um, brushes. 
the uh, y'all I just like camel hair uh, you don't necessarily have to use crafters choice but I like the camel hair it's it's soft and it's pliable and it works well with blending so I'm going to start with that shading orange and what I'm kind of do is I'm going to do these in four different quadrants so for me I kind of almost start here uh, in the middle and just bring that orange out right now all I'm doing is just getting a, that color down and so as I'm putting that brush down and I'm running out of paint, as you notice, I'm kind of just coming back to my plate and just picking up a little bit more. Yes, I'm going over top of the black right now. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna continue doing the same thing on each quadrant. You're gonna kind of start in the middle and just follow those lines, letting, allowing that width of that brush to just come in and get you one coat of your shading orange down. Trust me, y'all, this does not even need to look pretty. This is, this is a process. I'm already running out of paint, so I'm just gonna get me a little bit more. Load that brush, start in the middle on each quadrant, and just get one line down. Doesn't matter what it looks like, we will make it look better. You, this is just kinda your first step. Oops, y'all, uh, hello, I'm going the wrong way. I need to actually take this all the way up. All the way up, did not mean to go right there. That's okay. Good thing is we're gonna blend it out anyways. All right, so each quadrant, I've started with that shading orange on the outside of the quadrant. So I kind of break it up like uh, top right, top uh, bottom right, top left, bottom left, that sort of thing. I'm gonna set this brush aside. I'm not putting it in the water yet. Hey Tracy, how are you? Hey Brian, Kathy, so glad you are here. Hi Cindy. All right, so I got that shading orange down. Tracy says you make this look so easy. It is easy. I'm gonna show you guys, you can do it. You can do it. Okay, I, that was that shading orange I started with. I'm getting my new brush, same exact brush. I just have three different ones and I'm gonna turn and use the asterisk orange. I'm following the same principle that I just did with that shading orange. Now I'm just gonna come in right next to that line on the inside and I'm just simply putting in another line. I'm not even trying to blend yet. All I'm doing is getting that paint down. Now, when you're doing this, if you're somebody who moves slower, you might need to do these quadrants one at a time. Like meaning, do this whole section right here and then move to the next section. Me, I can move a little faster so I can make it work, but it is important that your paint is still wet because when you're blending, that paint's gotta be able to be, it's gotta be wet or else it's not gonna blend in. All I'm doing is repeating the same process and just pulling in the asterisk orange on the inside of the shading orange. Once I have that paint set down, now let me show you guys what this looks like. Not perfect. I don't have to worry about it being perfect because now I'm going to start making, I'm going to start doing the blending. Okay. I'm still using that asterisk orange brush, which is the orange I just set down. And what I'm doing is basically just taking this corner, taking a corner of that brush and pulling this asterisk orange into the shading orange. So I'm putting that corner and overlapping on top of that shading orange. And all I'm doing is going back and forth. Notice I'm not bringing my brush up and down. I'm keeping that brush on my piece the entire time. I'm not lifting it up. Why am I not lifting it up? Because I don't want to see breaks. In order for the blending to really come through, see how that's starting to get blended? I, I, I try to do one continuous stroke. I'm only overlapping just the corner, the tip of the brush into my next color. So I have that one blended, and now I'm gonna continue doing the same thing on each quadrant. Getting those oranges just really blended together where they meet, only where they meet. That just takes a few strokes, basically just making like a letter V with that brush. And just continue that same thing in each quadrant. Those of you that have, uh, you're saying the blending might be a little bit harder. Yes, y'all, it does take a little time and a little bit of practice. I would say if you're somebody that is struggling with it, to just do one quadrant at a time. Don't try to do all of them at a time because that might just be a little too much for you. That paint might start to dry on you and then you're not really getting that end result that you're wanting. 
when you're blending your colors, it needs to be a little bit wet. Now that I have these two oranges blended, I'm gonna set this brush down. I'm not washing it out for the single purpose of after I get this next orange down, if I look and I'm like, ooh, I need to go back and maybe blend that a little more, I want the brushes already wet with paint. So I'm just setting it next to me. I'm not putting it in the water. And now I'm gonna to switch to that light orange. Mary says, explain what a quadrant is. I'm kind of dividing this piece up. It's wet, so I don't wanna to touch it. I'm almost dividing this piece up in different quadrants. So kind of cutting it down the middle um, both ways. And then you have one quadrant, two quadrant, three quadrant, four quadrant, just four separate spots that I'm doing the same exact concept in. It's just kind of breaking it up into four sections. Sections, quadrant, you could really use either word. Hi, Cindy. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Mandy. So glad y'all are here. Cheryl, good to see you guys. All right, guys, switching. Now I've got my third Crafter's Choice uh, flat tip brush. Dipping that in the light orange and bringing that light orange in. Anywhere now that I see white, I'm simply putting it in almost like I'm mopping that color on there. Again, I'm not touching the other colors. All I'm doing right now is just getting everything covered. Anything that has white, now I'm covering it with a uh, light orange. You get a little bit more. I think I need to, it's time to fill up some of these bottles, y'all. Dip that paint, bring that light orange in. Those of you that have come in uh, recently, at the beginning, I was telling everybody, I started with one coat of white as my base. The only reason I have black on here right now is just for the sake of a life. When you guys are painting this, do not do the black until after you do the blending. There's no need for you guys to do that. Just start with one coat of white and go straight into blending. Uh, all right, y'all, so same thing. I'm gonna keep this brush with the light orange. Now I'm gonna just take this tip, just the corner, and overlap this corner onto the previous color, which is asterisk orange. I'm only going into that asterisk orange just a touch, just enough to get those colors kind of blended together. Now, I already can tell you guys, I don't care for the way that this is looking. I think I really need to switch back to that asterisk orange brush. This is exactly why I have not washed these brushes out because when I'm blending, and if I'm looking and I don't like the result that I'm getting, I'm gonna switch back to the, uh, the next color over. So now I'm just gonna get a little bit of asterisk orange and I'm gonna come right back in. And again, I'm taking that tip, just this corner, and bringing that tip into the um, light orange. I'm liking this result a lot better. Ooh, that's pretty. Let me show you guys what that looks like. That's all I'm trying to do right now is just kind of bring that in. I'm kind of going to be switching back and forth between the asterisk orange, which is the orange in the middle, and the light orange, which is the orange, or uh, yeah, the, the last one that we put on. So I'm going to just kind of overlap that corner into the asterisk orange with my light orange. Overlapping it. I'm not lifting up my brush this whole time. I start on the outside, bring that brush fully around. I'm not picking it up. The reason I'm not picking it up is because I want these lines to be fluid. You see how that's not blending very well with that lighter color at the bottom, this bottom section that we're working on? It's kind of like, you know, it almost doesn't, it just doesn't really look blended. That's how I decide if I'm gonna pick up my next color inward. So I did have that light orange. I'm now switching back to the asterisk orange and using that asterisk orange to do the blending now. Sometimes, especially when you're blending, you do have to kind of flip back and forth and back and forth until you get the end result that you're wanting. Y'all, this is all about what is visually appealing and what looks good to you. Now look at that blended section. It looks a little bit better after taking that asterisk orange back over and kind of doing the blending backwards. So I'm almost using that asterisk orange to blend into the shading orange and using the asterisk orange to blend into that light orange. So I'm gonna continue back and forth. Here we go again. I'm really just repeating the same exact thing over and over and over in every section. 
Why did I divide these up into sections? Uh, because it's just easier to focus on one part at a time as opposed to trying to just do it all, one section at a time. If you guys are a little slower at painting, no worries. Don't even worry about going, all right, now I'm using that, kind of going from section to section, but with the same color. You could do just one at a time, meaning complete this entire section before you move to the next. When it comes to painting, it's all about what works best for you. And what works best for me isn't gonna necessarily be the same things that work best for you guys. So you find what works for you and you do that. You stick with that. Y'all, blending is really, all blending is, is kind of going right back over your, your brush strokes over and over and over until you start to see those colors uh, kind of uh, blending together, running into one another. Oh, I love this, this one's coming out good. And y'all, I'm gonna tell you guys, whenever it comes to blending, if I don't like the way it's looking, I let it dry and I redo it. Paint right over top of it. But this one seemed to blend really, really good. My blending, what I'm looking for, to me what is successful with my blending is do my colors transition from one to the next without a defined line. That's how I determine whether I like the blended. Notice this light orange right here, how it really, it, it kind of it shifts into the next color. There's not a defined line right there. That's what I'm going for. That's to me what looks the best. So now that my blending is done, all three of these brushes are going into the water. I'm done with my blending brushes. Again, those of you that weren't here at the beginning, I was using Crafter's Choice three quarter inch flat tip brushes. They are camel hair brushes. I like the camel hair because they are pliable and it makes it easier for me to blend my colors together with those brushes. If you guys have different brushes that work well for you, fantastic. You know, use whatever you have that works good for you. These are just my favorites. I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer a little bit so we can start getting that black uh, filled in and get our white added onto here. Hi Debbie, hi Karen, hi Dolores, Carla. So glad you guys are here. How's everybody doing today? Lupe says, very pretty. Thank you, Lupe. Hi Donna. Uh, Mary says, y'all join Ashley and I on Monday for a jigsaw competition. Yes. We're going to be having some fun, y'all. And Mary thinks she's going to win. We'll see about that. <laughs> it's important not to wash brushes with water when you are blending. That is correct. I do not wash the brushes with water when I'm blending. I want my brushes to be dry. When my brushes are wet, for me, I notice that the bristles kind of separate and then I don't get that really good fluid pliable motion out of my bristles as I'm trying to use that paintbrush. So that's just my personal preference. That's what works for me. If you guys find something else that works better for you, more power, you go for it. Mary says, you know I am, please. We'll see about that. Hi Debbie, how are you? All right, just getting a little bit of, uh, obviously hitting it with a blow dryer, trying to just get it dry enough. I can bring that black in and I'm not gonna be blending that black with any other color. My, this one I've been using for probably about, I don't know, four months. And as you can see, it's starting to get a bend to it because I use it a lot. So now I'm just going to get that black paint. And this black paint is a little bit watered down. I water it down just a little bit because I find that I get more fluid brush strokes out of it. So 
kind of loading it, loading that brush with, or loading that script liner. And at this point, all I'm really gonna do is follow these lines that are etched onto my piece to just clean up all of that blended paint that I have everywhere. I'm simply placing, I'm loading that brush with paint and placing the brush down on my piece and just following these etched lines. I almost just stick it in the groove of these etched lines and allow that brush to just get taken all around. For me, I also find it a little bit easier whenever you're doing this on this pattern to break it up into sections or quadrants just like I did whenever I was uh, doing the blending and just do one section at a time. This uh, script liner is kind of old and it's uh, fanned out a little bit worn out and uh, so I really like it when it's coming to these lines because some of these lines are a little bit wider so I can really kind of put that pressure down on that brush and fan these bristles out and fit right into, walk around on the other side if you can't get it done, and fit it right into these lines. I really love painting this piece. I feel like uh, you start to get that black on here and it really starts to come together. It's so pretty. You're welcome, Ben. Now, some of these um, circles that are on here, I am gonna be putting white on. So I'm not gonna try to fill it, fill it in with the black right now because I know I'm gonna fill it in with white. So if you still see in a little bit of orange that looks funky, I know we'll take care of it when we come in here with the white. I would say as well, when you're doing this pattern, the outlining takes you a lot longer than everything else. And that's part of that reason why I already got that black down on here. Uh, is to try to make this process a little bit faster because whenever I was doing my sample I literally used a script liner on all the black and y'all it took me like probably 20 minutes at least uh, to get the whole thing covered in black and I was like oh wow that's that's taken a long time but there we go we got one little section done breathe, oh breath of God, now breathe. Disconnected. I am sorry, y'all. <laughs> my daughter just came in and borrowed my, my headphones. And I think when she went out, it set my phone to start playing music. Uh, but we got that first top quadrant done. And now we're just going to kind of keep on moving around the entire piece until we get all of our black laid down. I'm going to continue using the same script liner. And really just kind of butting up to the lines that are etched on that pattern. This is when this is definitely one of those patterns where you will appreciate the etched lines. It makes it super easy to kind of set your brush down, let your brush find that groove, and just pull it along that groove. Years ago, we used before we had um, before we got CNCs, we used uh, butcher paper and graphite paper, like transfer paper and would draw out our patterns and then cut them out with a jigsaw. And so, you know, you have like pencil lines that you're trying to see and half the time you couldn't see them by the time you, you know, uh, got your paint put on there. And uh, doing a pattern like this, if we were doing this one like back in the day, this one would have been hard uh, along those kind of lines. So I'm grateful today to have these uh, etched lines. They really, really make this process so nice, simple. I'm about to have to refill my paint cup because I don't know if you guys can tell but I'm really putting a lot of paint down on here. I am not being skimpy with it. 
I am loading that brush fully and just throwing that paint on down. Once I'm getting that paint down, I kind of uh, go back, as you can see, when I'm going back over a same section, that's just to kind of clean up that original line I'm throwing on there. go one section at a time about half done now we're gonna move to the other half hi Roberta how are you Debbie uh, says this looks so beautiful thank you Debbie I'm gonna get some more black paint in here because y'all I use a lot I really am throwing that paint on this piece pretty heavily so I'm gonna fill this up with some black I know I got my oh, there it is that water bottle Let's put a little bit of water I'm gonna mix that up Again, anybody who's new, anybody who's uh, not watched us before, we add a little bit of water whenever we do our shading and our outlining. Excuse me. We just thin it out a little bit so that our brush can glide more, more fluidly, more smoothly. How much water I add is really just dependent on uh, my brush. It's really... One of those things that the more you do it, the more you kind of already know exactly how much to add. So um, if you're new and you're just trying it out, start with adding just a little bit and see if that helps with your brush strokes, helps to make them more fluid, longer where they're not short and choppy. Sorry, y'all. Everybody seems to want to um, come over my phone today while I'm live. Tracy says, looks so great. Thank you, Tracy. I love painting this one. This one's fun. Uh, and y'all, I obviously kind of went with like traditional monarch colors, but you don't even have to do traditional. Um, I think, you know, doing like orange, I mean, not orange, uh, purple and teal and, and different blending different colors like that together would be absolutely gorgeous on here. In fact, my daughter asked if she could paint one like that uh, using the blues, purples, teals, that sort of thing. I was like, of course. I just need to cut her one. Um, I've actually been waiting on lumber. I ordered lumber two weeks ago and I still haven't got it because of all the rain. It has just not stopped raining long enough to get the lumber delivered from Pearland to Conroe. So we were supposed to get it Tuesday this week and then, because it wasn't supposed to rain, but you know, of course what happened? It started raining. So, got that one. One more to do, y'all, one more to do. We are getting there. Ginger says, I love this pattern. Yes, me too. I love it. It's so fun to paint. Ginger says, I use carbon paper and it is a pain. Yes, girlfriend, I hear ya. And I, I, those of you that have ever used carbon paper before too, like if you go and lean on that pattern as you're drawing it out, like say I, let, I lean my arm to help me draw, then you'll actually have like a whole part where that graphite will uh, be on your piece from you leaning on it. So yeah, the graphite, it's, it's nice if you don't have a machine, don't get me wrong. But once you have a machine, you have a whole newfound uh, kind of respect for that machine's abilities. And you also have a whole new gratitude, uh, a set of gratitude for, you know, not having to mess with that anymore. It's nice. It's definitely nice. I can say, in all honesty, I do not miss having to use the graphite paper and butcher patterns. Because half the time, too, I had so many patterns, paper patterns, and I would unfold them look, looking for a pattern. I'm like, oh, that's not the right one. Okay, go to the next. Oh, unfold it. Nope, oh, that's not the right one. You know, all that kind of fun stuff. Now, whenever I, I finish up this black, we are gonna move into doing the white on here. It is gonna be a little bit harder to do the white because I have a lot of black paint on here. And it's gonna be harder to uh, get this to blow dry quickly so we're gonna do the best that we can and uh, see how it looks but that white might be something I'm gonna have to come back with later and, and clean it up after this dries because y'all it is so much easier to 
when you're painting yard art and you're using the kind of paint that we use, it is definitely a lot easier to let it dry naturally and then come back and do your next step than it is to try to rush that process with a blow dryer. Because uh, inevitably, even if you do rush it with a blow dryer, you will still have um, wet spots. So we're gonna do the best we can to get it as far as we can. But we will just have to see how this goes. Almost there. Oh, I just love this guy. All right, all the little flecks of orange you guys might still see, that's really there because I'm just gonna come over top of it with um, white. So here's where we're at so far. Only thing we got left to do is add a little bit of white in here. Now, I'm gonna put my brush up for now, get in the water. I need to hit this with a blow dryer. Where is that lid? Here it is. Uh, hit this with the blow dryer and try to get these little uh, sections, these little dots that are etched in here where our white goes. I need to kind of try to get it as dry as I can around those spots so I can get that white in there and it doesn't mix with the black. Y'all, this paint is so wet. I have so much on it. I'm watching the paint like with the blow dryer being pushed around. So <laughs> we're going to see how this works. Ginger says, I'm dreaming of the day when I can get a CNC girlfriend. I, I get it. I so get it. It is, once you have it, you know, you feel spoiled. Very spoiled. And sometimes I forget, you know, what we used to have and how it used to go. And then it just helps to bring you that gratitude again of, yes, I'm so glad that I have this now. It's so nice. Hi, Cheryl. How are you, babe? One is going to be a little harder to finish all this white on the live. We're going to get as far as we can, but I think it's going to be something I'm going to have to do a little bit of touching up after I get done. There's a lot of black paint on here. It's more of the top of these butterflies that has a lot of the black. I think the bottom won't be as hard. All right, we're gonna do what we can with, with what we got in front of us. So last thing that we got is adding our white. I am just washing out that uh, script liner because I'm using that same script liner. And I'm gonna grab my white, and of course I don't see it here. I need to, oh, there it is, there it is. It's hiding from me, y'all. Now, whenever I do white and I'm using a script liner, I typically add quite a bit of water to it. I'd say at least 30, 40% of water. Um, that's just me. You do what you, what works best for you. Um, I can just, I'll show you guys what works best for me, but obviously y'all have to make the decisions of what works best for you when you're doing it. Uh, Tracy says, would you, uh, would you work to paint the white dots after or before the black Tracy? I would not. Because I did do that on my sample, and then when I started to come in with the black and do the circle around it, those white dots were about half the size that they were. Um, and so I ended up coming back over top and using the white to make my dots a little bit bigger. Because when I'm going around the white dots with the black, um, I'm kind of, I'm really trying to fit into that etched line, right? And so it makes that, the space, of the white smaller and I just didn't like the way that it looked. All right, so switching, I got my white now and now I'm just gonna kinda come in and all these other dots, I'm only really leaving, let me show you on my sample. I was, the whole step that I determined what to, what to leave orange and what to leave white, I honestly just looked on Google. I looked on Google at uh, photos of monarch butterflies. And I kind of just tried to replicate that as well, as good as I could. So I only really left six 
six of these dots. It's these three that are lined up and kind of elongated and then these three on each side to, to stay orange. All the rest I'm doing white. Let me show you that from back here. So these are the only ones on here that I'm gonna be keeping the orange. Everything else I'm gonna go with the white. Now, if you wanna do all white, you can do all white. Again, I just kinda of went based on a photo of um, monarch butterflies. Uh, da -da. Hi, Carolyn, how are you? Uh, the, the, Carolyn says, the shading blend is so pretty on this. Great job at teaching us, thank you. I'm trying to be as um, informative as I can, but if you guys have questions still, please let me know, I'm happy to answer them. Hey, Sandy and Jane, so glad y'all are here. All right, y'all, now, this top is still really wet, so I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm turn it around. And I'm gonna get these white dots all down here. I think the bottom's gonna be the easier part. I, it's not near as wet as the top. You know, but this is honestly probably gonna be a pattern. I'm gonna have to do some touch-ups after I get done uh, on this live. You know, let it actually dry fully, naturally with just air, and then come back and do any touch-ups that I need. So y'all, I'm basically loading this brush. This brush has a lot of paint in it. I'm kind of just setting it down in the grooves and just pulling it right across. The nice part about this too is that these little, they're not even really circles, almost ovals. They're not perfect ovals. So if, if I come outside of that line a little bit and it might look a little funky, it don't matter. It's a butterfly, they're not perfect. As we all know by seeing God's creatures in nature, they all look a little different and they're not perfect. And that's also the thing I think I like about doing this pattern is I don't feel like it needs to be, you know, perfect and symmetrical and anything like that. So if I have a little shaky line, oh well, I got a shaky line. Notice I'm also trying to really do these in one stroke uh, that's really just because there is some wet black paint inside of those etched lines and I'm not trying to pull that black up. So I'm really just trying to do it almost kind of quick uh, to keep that white on the top. So basically all these little um, ovals, circles, kind of whatever shape they are, uh, I'm really just coming in with that white and filling it in. I'm gonna show you guys something else I did use. I, I bought these little uh, writing squirt bottles on Amazon. I think they're one ounce and they have a really, really fine tip on them. And uh, they can be used to add more dots on here if you want. In fact, when I did my sample, I actually came in with that and added a bunch of white dots. But then while looking at it, I was like, oh, that's a little too busy. And so I ended up painting up over top of all those. But I'm gonna show you guys how I did the dots on like the face using that little squirt bottle. I just love it. I absolutely love it. Now these are the, the kind of circles that I'm more concerned about pulling that black up because I can see that black is still really, really wet around here. Again, the only reason I'm leaving these kind of six little spots the orange color is just because I looked on Google and I felt like that looked as, as realistic as possible. So I got this side done. Or let me pull it up so you guys can see. Now we're just going to finish out over here.
Every single time I'm going to a new dot, I'm, I'm dipping that brush right back in this paint. I have a ton of paint on this brush and that's really on purpose so that when I set that brush down, that paint gets in those grooves and I'm not pulling up any wet paint that might be underneath it. Not only that, if you can notice, it's helping me to move through the each dot pretty fast. It's making it really quick, maybe one, two strokes and then, you know, you're good. Keep on moving. Okay, let's see. I think I'm good. I think we got them all. Ta -da! Oh, that's just so cute. I just love it. All right, I'm done with that script liner. And I'm going to show you guys this little squirt bottle. In fact, let me, I think I have the package over here. I want to show you guys the packaging. So these, okay, these are two ounce squirt bottles. It is Americana accessories. You get three, it calls them squeeze writer bottles, like W-R-I-T-E-R, -E writer, write with your hand. And I got these on Amazon. Y'all, I probably bought these a year ago. And I just opened them last week, kind of playing with them. And so this one, I just put white paint almost, almost to the top, and then I just added a little bit of water so that that paint could be, could kind of flow through. So I'm gonna show you, let me find something. I'm gonna find something dark. Here, this has a dark background. I'm gonna sh make sure I shake this up. I'm just gonna show you like on the tip of here. You can make little dots. You can make them small, you can make them big. But I, I used this bottle to make these dots. So I only have just a few on the head, but really you could come in and, and, and add more dots if you wanted to. I really liked this because I just, it's easier to control than it is to control the tip of a paintbrush. So let me flip this. And I'm just simply gonna do a couple of dots here on the face. Again, I really determined what I wanted to do with this by looking at images on Google at actual monarch butterflies. Now down here on the tail, I don't know that this is going to work so well with this. I'll try it. If we don't like it, I can always paint over it when it dries. But down here on the tail, if you look on the images on Google, you almost have some really light uh, lines going across oh yeah this one okay this is a little harder for me to do a straight line on but that's just kind of like if you wanted to add a little more you could totally do that Ta -da! what do you guys think I love this thing I think it's so pretty. Again, if you wanted to uh, use these writer bottles, um, I can post a link in the comments on here. I got these on Amazon. I want to say they were, I don't know, seven, eight dollars, something like that for a three pack. Again, I've had these kind of sitting around for a year. I bought them to try them and I never actually tried them, uh, but I liked them for, for really using it in small little, you know, details. So Tracy says, I love it. Thank you, Tracy. I can't wait to see what yours turn out to look like. I know you're gonna do an awesome job. You guys are gonna be tackling that blending and giving it your best. And it is a fun process, but y'all, it does take a little time. Be patient with yourself when you're blending. Break it up and do one little section at a time. Complete that entire section and then move to the next, um, if that is easier for you, which I'm gonna assume it probably is for a lot of you guys. But I want you guys to try it out, give it your all, be patient with yourself and just keep working with it. Make sure your paint is wet when you are blending. It does not blend very good if it's dry. 
So uh, Teresa says, I already got four blank butterflies. Awesome, I can't wait to see your end results. And y'all, when my daughter gets hers painted, she says she wants to do one with purple and teal. Um, I'm gonna have to post some photos of that too because she really loves blending as well. But that is all that I have for you guys this week. Thank y'all so much for hanging out. I'm not even sure. I know next week we're going to be live every day doing some different things because our doors on Yard Art Academy are opening next week. Those of you who don't know, that is a paid uh, membership subscription. I want to say it's $22 or $25 a month. You get two free templates. You get 15% off of your blanks. And you get really, really detailed tutorials um, that you can go back and reference to. In fact, we have like pre-recorded videos that are all at your disposal for uh, outlining only, uh, shading only, blending only, how to base coat, what materials to use. I mean, all that. We have it really laid out for you guys. So you guys will see us live next week. I know Mary and I are doing a, a jigsaw cutting competition on Monday. She seems to think she's going to win, uh, but we shall see about that. <laughs> I hope y'all all have a great weekend. I'll see everybody on Monday. Debbie says, still during the year, yearly. Yes, ma'am, Debbie, we still are all still the same. Uh, so yeah, hope, hope to see y'all next week. Y'all enjoy your weekend, and I will catch everybody on Monday. Bye, everybody.